Okay, uh, I'm Jason Doucette uh, with Zona Games, and uh, we're a, an indie-based studio, uh, indie studio from uh, Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, in Canada. Okay, we do uh, retro-based games. Uh, we, we like to call them retro re-envisioned or uh, intense retro. So we basically take the, the concepts of uh, yesteryear, the, the retro type style of games where people remember playing back in the past, but also bring them into to today's type of game where the intensity is increased and the satisfaction, like you have instant gratification essentially. So that's basically it. The history of Zona Games, we essentially have been making games since we've been seven years old. So we, we have a, a big passion about this. We, we've been doing it ourselves for a long time. We have a passion in programming and, uh, and design. And uh, we started doing this uh, professionally about three years ago with the Microsoft Dream Build Play uh, contest. That's sort of what uh, allowed us to take the risk, the, the jump, to, to uh, s test to see whether this would work or not. And then once we did that, it just sort of just, we kept going because the, the passion has always been there. So here we are and we're still, still trucking through. <laughs> okay, the team is just the two of us. It's uh, two twin brothers. Uh, I'm Jason Doucette, uh, my brother is Matthew Doucette, uh, uh, I'm the lead programmer, Matthew is the game producer. Essentially we, we pr pretty much handle all, well we have to, we handle all the business functions and the development and design. We're brothers and we're twin brothers so we, we both sh seem to share the same uh, direction that we want to take the company in and uh, what we want to do for games. But at the same time we, we're, we're bound to argue and stuff like that but that's fine because we're, we're essentially uh, trying to figure out, our, find our way. and. So sometimes the best way to learn is like by making mistakes and seeing seeing what happens. So that's we're sort of bumping around, learning as we go, and hopefully we'll keep taking steps. One of our problems with uh, intense retro is that we're, we, we're sort of blocking out most a lot of the casual gamers because so far what we've done is bullet hell shoot shoot 'em ups, and uh, we it's not our intention to to. Uh, only appeal to a small segment of the market. That's not what we want to do. We just, we just know that we can make really good games, the ones that we understand very well. And uh, so we want to make more casualized games and, and actually make them more social, get online multiplayer and, and get friends. Not just all our games are four player co op in the same room, but we realize not everybody's always in the same room. Your friends aren't always visiting. So, so we want to sort of bridge that gap and still do the same type of games that we, we understand and love that we want to play, that are retro based, but bring them even further into to today's type of a style of game where it's more social and I mean that, that, that's, that's sort of our, for our next project, that's, that's, where we're, that's where we're headed. We already sort of have a design based all around that. It, it, it almost kind of, it's kind of bad that all, what we've done so far is shoot 'em ups because that's not the only type of game that we want to do. It just sort of has happened that that's what, ha that's what we've done. There's all kinds of old school games that we want to bring. It's sort of like the games that we, we played when we were seven or eight and we wanted to program. And some of them we did, just they couldn't really be games because we didn't have the tools and the fast enough computers to, to be able to do it. And now we're sort of reliving those and we're actually producing. So there's a bunch of games like that, like racing games, beat em up games, and adventure games, there's all kinds of things that we want to do. The shoot 'em up is just probably my favorite genre. That's the reason why we, we've tackled that. It's unfortunate that some people today just don't understand shooters, and just so we're having a little bit of, of grown pains as, as a result of that. But so far, what we've done is focus number one on gameplay, and I think that's important because we see a lot of indie games come out where. It, I always see them and it's like, man, just give me a couple of days with the source code and I'll fix the gameplay issue because that's the first thing that I notice. And no matter how pretty it is, if you don't have fun actually playing it, it's, it's not going to hit. So we, we know that we've mastered that, and we, and, uh, but the problem is everything else. So we, we, uh, for our next game, we want to ha actually have the number one priority be the social aspect. We'll still have the gameplay as, as the number, one, number two priority. And it probably will be some sort of shooter, maybe not a, a, a space shooter, but maybe like a run and gun type of. It, it, it might have that in it. It's not, that, but it's not going to be the focus of the game. That's sort of I like, can go two different ways. Whether we're talking about the three D, like first person shooters, or the old school two D shooters. For the old school two D shooters, what has happened is that people always think it's always the same thing. Oh, you just dodge bullets and you shoot. So you always have to throw something new in there to, to make your game uh, seem innovative. And uh, what has happened is that it's gone more and more crazy, and that's where the bullet hell and the maniac, sh maniac shooter 
concepts have come from. The problem with that is that, yeah, it, it attracts the people that are in the shooting up crowd to, to test the new game. So it's something new, but it scares completely everyone away that isn't in the shooting room. That's why it's. That's why the shoot 'em ups went from the early 90s being the number one genre. Now people don't even hear about them. People don't even want to try them, and it's and it's too bad because they're really fun games. You can, you can have a just a like a burst of gameplay for 10 minutes if that's what you have, and amazing action, and you jump out, and and they, they they're perfect for that. So, the one of the problems is by by making things too intense, you're actually scaring people away. And what we're going to try and do is a. Uh, <laughs> Bring back the the retro from yesteryear. Still maintain the intensity of what people demand today, but do it in a way that doesn't scare everybody from trying the game. Mm -hmm. So th that's quite a challenge for for, for 2D shoot 'em ups. In terms of first person shooters, well, in Canada, the, the game industry is really really taken off. But we're in, we're on, way on the east coast, in Nova Scotia, and. Uh, the government has really recognized that this is an amazing industry and they're, they're, they're offering amazing tax credits for companies to come in. And uh, so th they're actually he here at GDC showcasing this, uh, saying that this is an amazing place to come. And companies are actually moving to Nova Scotia to take advantage of this. And uh, so there's, there's a, a, a growing industry in Nova Scotia. And it's kind of funny coming to GDC because it's, it's such a small place that, not GDC, but Nova Scotia is that you hear other people say, like, oh, I wish like, we had an industry. Like, and, and, because where I grew up is a, a town of less than 10,000 people in a fishing community. The industry is zero. There's like me and my twin brother <laughs> is, is the industry. <laughs> so the, the, closest, uh, the closest city is Halifax, about three hours away. And it's sort of mostly centered around that. But at least that's accessible. It's not quite in the same town, but at least I'm sort of next door in some sense. I, 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 I kind of wish I was a, a little bit closer because it, Still, the distance still matters. It's still, a, it's not like you just make a three and a half hour drive uh, on a whim. But so we're still sort of isolated, but we're not as isolated as we, we once were. Future of video games, I mean, it's, it's I guess you, you say the obvious, like things are going more social and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, I, I guess it's, uh, I mean, things always have to change because you, we're, it's human nature just to get bored with the same, how things are, are the, in the same manner. That's it, 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 just kind of like what I said with the shoot 'em up genre. Things have to change. You have to add something, some new gimmick or something in. And it's almost to the point where I, I'll see some company uh, reinvent uh, a past game that was amazing, and then they add new mechanics and they take old mechanics out, and it ends up ruining the game. For, at least for me, and for, for, I see for other people as well. And it's like, oh, why did they do that? But then you realize like you can't. Even speaking with them, it's like you can't just do the same thing over and over again. You have you have to change. So, at, at some point, the, the I mean, the social nature of video games have, has always been there. I mean, ever since the, I'm going to go back to like the third generation, like of the original Nintendo, where games had two players. And it, I mean, that came with two controllers. You, you, systems today that you buy don't even come with two controllers. Where your friend was supposed to be sitting next to you on the couch and playing this game. That's that's sort of what the games that we're we're making as well right now, like. All of them are four-player co-op, so you can grab four controllers and play. So I think the social nature will always be there. Just, just now with the connectivity of the internet, even though it's sort of, it makes it less, you don't have to go to your friend's house to sit down on the couch because you can just connect over the internet. So it's weird, that's sort of lost, but at least you are doing that. You can see the scores and, and uh, you can, the leaderboards and stuff like that. So the, that will always continue. But from there, it, it's just so hard, it's, it's so hard to say. Like what, it's so hard to to, to 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 know or to guess. I mean, I guess if if I could, I would I'd be working on something that <laughs> blow everything away. But but uh, I, I I do know that it's a it, gamers today have a lot more choice of content. So you 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 sort of need something that gives you instant gratification, and you also need something that that uh, that gives you recognition and reward for your efforts. In, in the game, that, because there's other games that do that, so you, you kind of want someone to say, yeah, I see what you did, and here's, here's your, like, like your, your star for doing it. <laughs> Indie games are, are, are interesting because they're always small companies that are willing to take risks. Is it just like a, I mean, I, I, I don't really consider myself taking a huge risk, but people will look from, uh, uh, like, other companies will look and say, yeah, you, you guys are, and like, most, indie, most indie guys are. 
And, uh, and some people have even crazy, crazy concepts. They have no idea if it's going to work or not. I mean, uh, there, there's ways to find out through prototyping and throwing things out in the market before it's, before it's finished to see how, how the, 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 the audience reacts. And, uh, but I, I don't think it's ever going to change. Any games are always going to kind of, kind of be pushing into, into... It's almost like the, the fact that they, some of them don't have the experience to know not to be stupid. So they, they try things, and all of a sudden some, some of them work because the, the big companies don't want to change a formula that's already working, so they're, they're fearful of actually expanding their borders, and indie games are always going to be pushing that. That's why I, I love this resurgence of, of indie. Everything's indie now, and it's like, I think it's amazing, so it's, a, it's, it's hard to say where the indie guys are going to take it, it's just, but it'll be nice to see. <laughs>